So I had to take Bethany to the dentist today. I took her into the lobby and she said, Mom, you don't need to be here. So I'm like, all right, well, I will just go get myself a cup of coffee and sit out in the car and talk to you guys for a few minutes. This is the transition to adulthood. They're spreading their wings of independence, I guess you could say, and just want to do things on their own, which I think is, is really a, a very good thing. Um, we've been wanting to talk to you guys about these COPPA laws, this, this COPPA regulation and all that, and I don't, you know, I don't really know all that much about it, but I'm going to put my two cents in here and then I'm sure that Joe's going to have some things to say to you guys later on but um, you know these laws and regulations have been in effect for a very long time it's just that recently um, I guess YouTube got into a little bit of trouble and ended up having to pay some big fine and so the whole thing is kind of blown up and now they just um, they're coming, they're hammering down on channels that are directing their content to children because the COPPA regulation, as I understand it, has more to do with gathering information about young children and a child is defined by law as someone who's under the age of 13. So we don't do that. You know, YouTube does that. Our channel and what we're going to do is we're going to comply with the regulation by labeling our channel as not for children. It's not for children. And for those of you who are new to our channel, I think this is a really good opportunity for me to go through the kids' ages. You're all always wanting to want, uh, know how old everybody is. And so this is a, another new opportunity for me to clarify just how old our kids are. So Obed is our youngest son. He is 13. He will be 14 in just a couple weeks. And so he's he's by the time all this comes into effect, he'll already have turned 14. So our next um, youngest child is Abigail. Abby is 18. And then Jesse just had her birthday. And so she turned 19. Jesse is 19 years old. Uh, David and Bethany are both 20 and Hannah is 24 and so basically from Abby through Hannah our kids are adults they're you know Obed the youngest at age 14 he is allowed to have his own channel and be on YouTube and participate you know as much as he's able to and certainly you know it's with our mom and dad are involved in the channel and we're doing you know the majority of it the kids are doing their thing and and it's all perfectly fine our content I do not believe is for children I think if I had to rate our channel right now if I had to come up with a rating I would say that our channel falls somewhere between PG and PG 13 uh, little children young children really can't process information about disabilities they may not understand why Hannah and Obed don't have eyeballs they you know they need their parental guidance and so it, the people that we know of that watch the channel the younger people they are watching with their parents and their grandparents these are the people that we hear from um, in the comments, sometimes you might think that it's a young person that's leaving a comment, but we do have a lot of people here that are living with disability themselves, intellectual disability, autism, different kinds of things that require them to use voice to text and sometimes, you know, things ideas and spelling and that sort of thing get mixed up that way. But, you know, clearly they're they're able to be legally on the platform to our knowledge but but we're going to label it as not for children that's that's just the way it is we're not kids on the channel and you know we're not directing our content to kids we don't do the challenges and the slimes and all the the animation and the things that would you know normally draw a child in so there's that we're not too worried about it at first I was very very worried I you know I just I looked at those fines and honestly I, I thought oh my gosh why are we even doing this you know I even considered quitting but that's that's definitely an overreaction the regulations themselves were not 
concerned about. You know, my biggest concern is the, the false positive identifying from the AI that YouTube uses and the knee jerk reaction of YouTube to kind of, you know, hammer down on us in order to protect their own, you know, backside and bottom line. Let's just tell it like it is. So I think it has to do with advertisers putting pressure on them and, you know, that big hefty fine they had to pay and all that. But we're not too concerned about it, so don't worry about it. Uh, we are going to be changing some things up. You know, you guys have been wanting to see some of our um, younger, the, the content that we have, the films that we have of the kids when they were little. And I think what we're going to do um, in light of all this is we're just going to play it safe. We'll probably put some of that content, some behind the scenes, some things that we, you know, uh, want to share with you guys um, separately from, you know, the larger audience, I suppose, um, we're going to do all that on Patreon now. So if you'd like to become a patron, you can. Joe will give you some more details about that. Um, also, I'd like to take this opportunity, too, to mention that if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do that. We're uh, getting very close to that silver play button, and the whole family is very excited as we anticipate the countdown to that. So just double-check to make sure you're subscribed, and if you're watching and, and uh, haven't subscribed, we'd ask that you would consider doing that. It would help us out a lot, and uh, we really appreciate you guys very much. A little story about our background. Um, many years ago, when I was going through the infertility, when Joe and I were going through the infertility, I was going out of my mind. I, you ladies who've been through this, you know how you know what this is like. But in order to keep myself sane, I started making these little rag dolls, and so I would just—it was a creative outlet for me. And I started sewing the dolls and. You know, eventually we started doing craft shows and one thing led to another and we opened up a collectible doll store. Now, from the outside, that doll store looked like a toy store. It looked like it was for children. But the fact of the matter is the dolls, the collectibles, the, you know, works of art that we carried in our store some of them carried price tags of several thousand dollars and most of them were in the hundred to several hundred dollar range not for children now grandmothers and mothers would bring their girls in and you know we had a sign on the they would do the hobby together it was a hobby and they participated in that hobby together but we had a sign on the door that basically we tried to think of a, of a humorous way to just let you know this is not for kids and so we put a sign on the door that said unattended children will be you know sold as collectibles so you know, it might look like it's for kids sometimes, but it's really not at the end of the day. And so that's just my little side story for you guys. It's not always, uh, always as it appears. And our family is filled with teenagers and young adults trying to transition and navigate their way through, you know, into transitioning into adulthood. And I think the biggest thing about our channel is that we are showing people, we'd like to inspire and show people who might not realize that just because you're living with a disability, or in our case, a whole house full of disability, I mean, we're still a normal family, a typical family that enjoys doing the same things that all of you enjoy. So thank you for being part of our journey. We appreciate all you guys. And... Um, See in the comments. Well, yeah, it's raining. Yes. Indeed. How was your appointment? It was good. Yeah. Yeah. Are you in there? Oh, I see you now. <laughs> so, what are we gonna do now, Bethany? Go have some lunch. You don't want to go shopping, huh? Where would we go to go shopping? I have no idea. Maybe we should go have lunch and talk about it. Yeah. When it's rainy and. And miserable like this it's better just to eat so I guess we'll go do that yeah and I didn't need you for the most part of the appointment you did not need me at all actually 
And so I went and enjoyed a nice cup of coffee and talked to our friends for a while. Yep. Right? And now I picked you up and we're going to go play hooky and have some lunch. Yep. All right. Sounds cool. All right. Okay, Miss Independence. <laughs> yes. Where to? Have you thought about what you want to eat for lunch? Uh, Payway. You want to go to Payway? Yeah, because I, I never, I've never been there before. They have, they have really good um, Asian food. And I, I don't mind splitting with you. Yeah, we could split a couple things. That would be really good. We'll go there. And since it's a cold and blustery day, I think we're getting the. There's a, a bad snowstorm up in the northeast. For those of you who are our friends up there, I feel really bad for you guys. But we're um, we're getting kind of the the icy drizzles and the cold temperatures and things. Hopefully, we're not going to get any of that snow. But I I really do feel for you guys. I All right. Say something. What happened what? to fall? What did happen to fall? Because it feels like winter. It does feel like winter. Even though it's not quite winter. What's the first day of winter? Uh, I'm not sure. Is it supposed to be yet? <laughs> I think it's pretty soon, but but you know, whether it's on the calendar or not, I think winter has arrived, yep. Bethany. Mother Nature has arrived. I think so. All right, let's go someplace where it's nice and warm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you hope. Let's see if this comes back to you, Bethany. Did All you right. see these chopsticks in Thailand? Yes. All right, let's, let's hope see. this, let's see if it comes back to you. Okay. And that's a Thai, what is it? Pad Thai. Or pad Thai, okay. Yes. Chicken. Which looks delicious. You look like an expert with those things. Now you didn't take them apart and use them. You're using them together like a scooper mm -hmm. instead of taking them apart and using them like a traditional way. But that looks to be pretty effective. Is that how you did it in Thailand? Yeah. Or did you use them to, are they apart or together like that? Uh, I think for what I remember in Thailand, they had like the two separate, the two chopsticks. Separate, yeah. but you're just scooping with them? Yep. Hmm. Interesting. Your food looks so good. I'm gonna have to have a bite of that for sure. I got General Sows. Oh, so good. So good. With rice? <laughs> With steamed rice, yeah. So good. All right, let me see you go in for another another try there. You're just jabbing it and scooping it. That's kind of like not fair, is it? What? <laughs> take them apart. Here, take them apart and see if you can do it the real way. Okay. There. Okay. She's gonna. You're gonna put them back together and scoop and. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you're still though. I mean, I can't balance. You know the food on a. I can't do <laughs> chopsticks. It, it's hard sometimes. You do them both with one hand, Bethany. Oh. You're supposed to do them both with one hand. Definitely the poke and scoop method. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ah. I thought it'd be like riding a bike and it would just come right back to you. Hey, you got the job done. That's what matters. All right, I'm gonna let you enjoy your lunch, okay? Yeah. You don't wanna, you don't wanna sit here and just eat your food in front of everyone in the world, do you? No. Like literally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Enjoy. We'll talk later. Yep. See ya. See ya. So how's your lunch? It's really good and it's filling. Oh good. It looks delicious. Oh my gosh. And then I was saying that in when I lived in my country, yeah. We would eat this for breakfast. That was breakfast? Yeah. Wow. I don't know how you do that. That looks it's <laughs> light, but it's hearty at the same time. So you've always had big breakfasts. Yeah. Wow. That's that's kind of neat to know. So yeah. they fed you. They gave you all that—the chicken, the, the noodles, everything—when you were in the orphanage. 
Some vegetables too. A lot of vegetables. Okay. Did you always have meat with every meal? Oh, um, sometimes. Oh, just sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes did, it would be rice. did you have meat every day? Or do you remember? Um, I don't remember if it was every day. No. Well, you're good and healthy, so you must have gotten a, a nice balance of what you needed. So yes, that's really good. They would make it spicy sometimes. Even for the kids? If they like it, they just pile it on. You guys all like super, super <laughs> spicy food. So this is in your DNA. Every single one of you. I don't. I mean, Hannah's gone yeah. kind of light on the spice. Yeah. You know, but the rest of you and David, oh my gosh, I can't make it hot enough, can I? No. <laughs> which, is, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. All right. Yummy. Yeah. Enjoy your breakfast. <laughs> Thanks. We just can't uh, end any date without a Starbucks, can we, Bethany? No, we cannot. <laughs> we cannot. So what'd you get there? I got a small peppermint mocha. Is it delicious? Yes. All right, it warms your innards on a cold and blustery day like today, I suppose, right? Yes. Okay, well, neither one of us feels like shopping because it's cold and just miserable out. And so I think we're gonna call it an early day and uh, take our yummy drinks for yeah. the road and head on home to get the buses. Yes, it's nice to get out the house. It is, isn't it? And yeah. to play hooky? Yes. I hope you enjoyed it. Yes. Even though, are your teeth sore? Nope. Oh, perfect. All right. That's All right. a wrap.